Assalamu alaikum students how are you all i hope that you all are fine today our lecture is related to the chapter sex and this is a book nsm2 new syllabus mathematics 2 and i'm going to explain you practice now one which is given on page number 66 basically in new book it's page 66 and in old book it's page 395 all right in practice now one uh the question is it is given that c is x is equal to the set x and x is a positive integer between 10 and 18 now they have told you that c is equal to x and and basically x is denoting the numbers between 10 and 18 okay ji And c is equal to x, and x is denoting the elements between ten and eighteen. Basically, positive integers, positive integers between ten and eighteen. <laughs> Sorry. Now they are saying that and d, d is is equal to the set x, and x is positive integer set such that ten is less than equal to x and less than eighteen. Okay, so now they are saying that ten is. Okay, g. Is a positive integer. D is equal to x, and x is a positive integer such that ten less than equal to x and less than eighteen. Okay, Ji. Now let me explain you that this symbol means less than, and if this small line is coming with less than or greater than, it can be like this and it can be like this. This small mean that equal to. This small line mean that equal to, and this is mean. less than now it means that 10 less than equal to x means the x is the number which is less 10 is less than x means x is greater than 10 and equal to 10 this line is showing that equal to 10 and then less than 18 okay ji i will write it now how would i write it then it will be clear to you okay ji in part a in part 1 they are saying that list all the elements in c and d in set notation now i'm going to write it in set notation c is is equal to x and s is showing the integers between 10 and 18 so in the positive integer it's not written negative if it's written negative then you have to put minus sign with the integers it's written positive integers between 10 and 18 between 10 and 18 mean that 10 and 18 are not included you have to write the integers which are in between 10 and 18 so the integers will be 11 12 Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So these are the integers between ten and eighteen. Okay, G. Now in part the now the set D is the elements which are ten less than equal to x and less than eighteen. It means that you have to write the elements between ten and eighteen. 10 is less than x equal to mean that x is greater than 10 so you have to write the number uh, number of elements which are greater than 10 here you can see this part 10 less than equal to x it means that 10 is less than and equal to x in other words you will say that we will say that x is greater than 10 and equal to 10 so we have to write the elements which are greater than and equal to 10 and less than 18 So I'm going to write the elements. I will write ten because here you can you can see that this line means equal to. So I'll write ten, eleven. Basically, we are writing the elements of x. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen. I will not write it in because it's written that x is less than eighteen. So you have to write the elements which are less than eighteen. So I will stop here. So this is the set notation of D, and this is the set notation of C. Okay, G. Now in part two, they are saying that do C and D contain the same uh, contain the same elements? If not, explain why. Here you can see that these are not the same elements because we will say that no because here you can see that in this set ten is present in this set ten is 
not present so we will say that they do not contain the same elements okay ji this was practice now one okay ji i hope that this is clear to you all right now let's come to practice now two okay which is given on the same page that is 66 in new book and in old book it's page 395 okay in practice now to uh, the question is state whether each of the following collections is a well defined set give a reason for your answer here i'm going to show you the question okay ji this is practice now to when the question is state whether each of the following collection is a well defined set give a reason for your answer okay ji in part a is a movie well liked by my classmates okay they are talking about a movie okay let me tell you about that uh, what are well defined well defined mean that the something you can count and that is cleared in numbers that you can count in numbers so we will say that this is a well defined number and in part a they are saying a movie here you can see that a movie cannot be a well defined number so we will say that this is not a well defined set we cannot count the movie okay movie is not a number or something movie is something that you watch it's not a well defined object so we'll say that it's not a set it's not a well defined set now let's come to part b a part b is a 14 year old pupil in my class now they are talking about a student which is 14 year old 14 year old student so here you can count the student that is one one number here you can count it one number it's a well defined it's clear that that is a student that is 14 years old student so we'll say that this is a well defined okay ji okay if you write it in the form of set there is a 14 year old people there is a one people so we'll say that one okay now let's come to part c an english teacher in my school they're talking about a teacher one teacher here this is a well defined object one teacher you can count it so this is also a well defined set so we'll say that yes okay this is all about practice now too i hope that this is clear to you now let's come to practice now 3 practice now 3 is it is given that p is equal to x and x is a positive integer less than less than 1 and q is equal to 0 is a set which is containing the element 0 okay in part 1 they are saying that list all the elements of p in set notation are p and q equal sets why okay ji now i'm going to explain you they are saying that p p is equal to x as a set which is containing x and x is a positive integer less than 1 so here we are going to write the elements of p in set notation in part 1 Okay, in practice now three in part one they are saying that list all the elements of P in set notation. Here let me tell you one thing that if a set is not having any number or any element, we'll say that this is a null set. We'll say that this is a null set. Okay, ji. or we can also say that this is an empty set where there is no element. We'll say that this is an empty set or null set. Now here they are saying that write down the elements less than one. Here you can see that there is not. an integer which is less than 1 integers are starting from 1 remember that positive integers and negative integers both integers are starting from 1 so less than 1 is 0 and 0 is neither integer nor a number so we'll say that it's an empty set it's an empty set p is an empty set in part 1 p is a null set there is no element there is no an integer less than 1 so it's an empty set now in part b they are saying that r p and q uh equal sets here q is equal to 0 so in part 2 we will say that they are not equal r p and q equal sets we'll say that no they are not equal set why because here you can see that in p there is no element and in q there is one element that is 0 so we will say that no p and q are not equal sets okay ji i hope that you are cleared okay today's lecture is clear to you If you like uh, my videos and if you want uh, more help regarding your subject, kindly subscribe this channel. 
and you can subscribe it by clicking on the red button which is showing below the video thank you very much and allah hafiz